who only serve God to appease your conscience or to get something out of them, but you're still in your natural nature. And if we're in our natural nature, here's the situation. In Romans 5, God says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of this flesh. How could I gratify myself? Notice, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the thing of the flesh. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. Because the flesh is not our friend. We inherited that from Adam. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. Hostile. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Do you hear that? It does not submit to God's law. So you know how we try to do? We become Perry Mason. We pick and choose which one we could obey. Oh, that one's not too bad. I won't cover my neighbor's wife. That's not too bad. But there might be another ulterior motive why you won't. See, you got to remember, the heart, Jeremiah says, is incurably wicked. The more we understand the motions of our heart, the quicker we're going to drive ourselves to Jesus Christ. See, we have to understand that. He says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you have, you don't submit to God's law. You cannot, that applies ability. If you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That's a second death. So let's talk about what is in this body of death that gets so ignited by a world that's against each one of us. It's this. The works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's got to shock us. Because when we see all these ingredients, look, when I looked in the mirror, I never saw those in me. I thought they were natural. I couldn't wait to go to the Coupe de Ville. <laughs> All right? Because these things were natural. I didn't know any better. But when God hit me in between the eyes, I'm like, now what do I do? What do I do, right? Because it scares you when you realize what we really are. But it's also a blessing. You know why? When we know our condition, what do we do? Let me put it on a level we all understand. You go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you got cancer. What do you do? Zip, online. You start researching. You look for this doctor. You look. Do we do that for Christ? Why? See, there's something wrong with us. Come on, we ought to admit that, right? We'll take care of life now. Why? I want to live. But this is only, this, this, is, this is temporary. This is temporary. And as long as it's temporary, Satan and the world and our flesh are going to get fed. It's going to be, and we're fertile ground, man. We're loaded with manure. All it takes is one seed and we're going to sprout. That's what we are. Martin Luther called it, we're a pile of dung. And unless Christ put his, his righteousness over us, we're still dung. The world is made up of unconverted people who live by their flesh or under the sway of the wicked one. How do we know we're owned by the world? How do we know? How do we know the world owns us? We are easily influenced by the crowd. Right? We're easily influenced by the crowd. The culture we find ourselves dictates what we are to believe. And what do they use? Education, media, advertisements. And they bombard you. They're not your friend. See, the natural man follows the course of this world. Their education, 
their mindset. What the world says, I believe because everybody is doing it. And we as natural human beings love to correspond our lives with people that are like us. We'll conform to them. We'll be in uniformity with them. We're in harmony. We're, in, we're one big union hall. We're in union with everybody that agrees with me or agrees with us. And I know firsthand when I was growing up, I didn't want to hang out with the preps. I didn't want to hang out with, you know, anybody that wasn't like me. You notice that? Because what we do is we develop a friendship of people like me who do the same things, act the same way. So we feel like we're a part of something. And as long as I got other people, I got to be right. Until God comes in, right? Until God comes in. Jesus says this, and he says this to the saints. He said, if you were called out of this world, he says, if you were of this world, think of this saint, if you were of this world, the world would love you as its own. If you're of this world, the world's going to love you. But because you're not of this world, your source of education, your mindset doesn't come. But I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Why? You're not one of them no more. What happened? Grace. God's amazing grace. See, those who receive grace and faith in Christ, remember, as you stand for God's word, we're the oddball. We're the oddball living in a world, but let's also realize something. This world needs us. It's not what Dionne Warwick sung, the world needs love. The love that the world needs is the love that comes from God the Father that manifests itself in the Son that tells people, repent and believe. In 1 John 2, 5, 17, and these are just warnings that we all need to hear. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, he's not talking about the beauty of the mountains, the spacious skies, the redwood forest. He's not talking about these things. Here's what he says. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. See, these ingredients are from the world, and the world is passing away, along with all its desires, but whoever does the will of God will live forever. James says this, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world, friendship with the desires of our flesh, the pride of life in these things, friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy to God. Who dictates to us? Who or what attracts your affections? Your understanding. What brings you into harmony? Well, in closing, one of the things about the Bible that shows that it's from God is the prophecies. It's amazing. The 100% perfect prophecies. The Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, 800 some odd years. He's going to die. He's going to rise. You know, all these prophecies, what's going to happen to Canaan, what's going to happen to the Amorites, what's going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah, all these things, perfect. But there's some things that didn't happen yet. These are the future things. And we're going to take a quick peek before we close with this sermon. What's ahead of us? In Revelation 21, 8, it says, and he's speaking to the church, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, everybody is included here, for murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. He says, that's the second death. Spiritual death first, second death second. In Revelation 6, 16, 
This is what happens when God comes back. Here's what we may be saying. We will be calling the mountains and the rocks to fall on us, to hide us from his presence. Why? Because now we know we didn't want to repent. We didn't want to place our faith in him. We will scream, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who was seated on the throne and from the wrath of Jesus Christ. For the great day of the wrath has come and who can stand? And Paul reminds us, he says, don't be deceived. Don't be lied to by your flesh, by this world, by the crowd around you. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that's what you're going to reap. You plant a tomato, you're going to get a tomato, right? You plant sin, you're going to reap damnation. For the one who plants to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Amen. What must I do to avoid God's justice? Repent. Turn from those sins. They're not your friend. Even though they're in our bodies and they seem like darlings. They, we love to get enticed by these things. It's amazing, right? But they're not our friend. They're out to destroy it. Repentance toward God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, Jesus is the only one who will deliver us from this present evil age. He's the only one. Turn to him and be saved. Amen.